sudden signals were now. How heavy is the wire This is a this big big one is a one G B level, right? Uh, uh order of one G B. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, almost uh, invisible. That's why people did not find it. But there's still possibility because it's not really ruled out. And uh, it might show up, for example, as you know, six decay. Yeah, but the, it's not be invisible as you see detector. <laughs> uh, it's not true. Uh, this study actually shows that you can see that uh, at the level of five sigma uh, with a, a few hundred inverse phantom luminosity. So actually, okay, that's actually a good point. I mean, the typical searches may miss this kind of signal because they use the rather large PT cut. For example, they use the PT cut as 20 GB in the standard model heat search to avoid the sudden background, which means uh, they remove these, these data, which is mostly about the leptons from the dark G. So they can actually see that in the typical searches. And we suggest they can lower the PT cut to the 4 GB, and you can save many data from the GD, and you cannot entirely remove the uh, background, but you can still, so you have still some small background here, but signal peak can be much larger than the background, so you can possibly see that. People just simply don't do this kind of analysis, so that's why we made this suggestion. So the, Okay, so as I mentioned, a few hundred inverse time to one could possibly make the five sigma discovery, which means we have to wait a few years of time <coughs> to test this idea. Uh, now I'm a little bit confused. When you talk about the D to K, yes. how was the bound there for one G V V prime? How does the <coughs> uh, uh, you mentioned this, but uh, shouldn't that what kind of constraint you put on uh, this one gene? Oh, you no, I mean, the constraint on the delta. So it survives, like one still has it? Um, so for the dark photon case, the bound on the epsilon squared basically comes from this plot. This is about 10 to the minus 5 when the G prime mass is about 1 GB. And in the dark G case, uh, it's not shown here, but there are various, exper uh, various data um, values from various experiments. Let me see if I have some. So the delta bounds actually um, come from various experiments, like low energy parity violation, K decays, D decays, and X decays. And there's some caveat, but the typical age about delta squared is about 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 5. And I'm using that value to give the bound in the DDK. If there's another delta square factor that's very small, why do we expect to see? Uh, be because it is small but still sizable. That's what our study shows. So the how much data does this one need? In, in, your, in your spike plot, how, yeah. how much data did it correspond to? Oh, um, so um, this is just an arbitrary unit, but uh, it gives you a signal of a background of about 1.5, and you need okay. I, I think I probably have the right So you're saying in run two, this is possible. <coughs> but I thought you said delta squared is 10 to the minus four, right? Delta squared is 10 to the minus four, yes. I thought it would be mass dependent. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about the mess. Um, I don't know where it is, but I know it's somewhere here. So this is the required luminosity to discover the G prime in the Higgs decay. So if the break, so it depends on the delta and also the breaking ratio of the G prime. But 
for the typical value of the delta squared and the branch ratio tends to be minus four. Five, you need mm. like 400 inverse band to one for the five sigma discovery. Wow. Should I move? Okay, so there was the hit. Now, there's another possible channel uh, that I've worked with my collaborators, that's the top decay. There's a very good chance of the new physics in the top decay, because top is the heaviest particle in the standard model, and each decay branch ratio has a larger uncertainty, order of 10%. So the top may decay into the other particles, including the G prime. And if there's a very light charge decay, how can decay into the B and charge the heat, and then B, W, and the G prime. This is the exactly the same decay mode of the top major decay, the BW plus G prime, and the G prime is very elusive. So it is possible that we have just taken this signal as the just usual T to BW data. So we suggested that the reanalysis of the existing ATB TT bar data May, uh, may give you the discovery of the G prime uh, in more than in five sigma level right now. So this is a 20 inverse band to one, which is the total uh, integrated luminosity of ATB, the ATB LHC experiment. So this data exists. So if you uh, reanalyze it with our uh, scheme using the lepton jet, you can possibly see this large signal over this small background which means you don't really have to wait a few years to see this. You can just look at the data and figure, uh, find out if this is true or not. But what is this mass? This is a uh, mass, uh, mass of a what? Uh, how do you calculate this mass? Uh, this is the actual lepton gen mass, but this is almost the same to the G prime mass. So you basically assume some G prime mass and take the window and cut all the signals out of that window and use the mass window. But the, uh, I don't think our detector resolution is good enough to, to get such a narrow peak, only like uh, less than GeV level. I should be pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, so the resolution is therefore GeV for me. Yeah. The detector resolution is actually good enough. They just yeah. don't take the full uh, exploitation, but uh, I'm at least in our study. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but check. this uh, is jet, so I don't know. This is the lepton. This is lepton. This is this is not jet. This is the lepton jet. And that's a actually the lepton jet is basically the some collimated lepton, and somebody just named the lepton jet. That's why some people are confused. But this is not really jet. This is just leptons. You mean two lepton, um, two lepton form of jet? Okay. Yes. Yeah, then that makes sense. Mm. So because the dark photon, dark force carrier is a very uh, unusual particle. Uh, the typical such schemes may not apply, and you can also develop some new interesting schemes that can possibly discover it even with existing data. Okay. I covered the top decay. Um, I extended the edge. So uh, this plus shows the extended range of parameters of the dark photon. Uh, and so far in my talk, we covered only this small area, but there's a much larger parameter space, of course. And in that entire parameter space is necessarily related to the original uh, motivation, which is the astrophysical anomaly. But there are best <coughs> only explore the parameter space, like here, waiting for us. And the exploration of easy parameter space requires new ideas and the experimental innovation. Let me summarize my talk. The dark force, uh, the force among the dark matters, was originally introduced to explain some astrophysical data. And potentially, it can be also a solution to other puzzles like the muon G minus the anomaly, which masses of order of 1 GV, and its coupling should be extremely weak to the standard model particles. And this is such a like the low energy labs such as Jefferson Lab and the B Factory, and it may also affect the LHC experiment. 
It's an overview of my own contributions in the dark horse uh, study. We presented a new type of dark horse model, the dark G, which is basically a dark photon with a generalized coupling. We suggested a new experiment for the dark horse searches, the low energy parity test, collaboratory mm -hmm. measure decays, rare Higgs decay, rare top decay. And we performed a feasibility study using the Monte Carlo simulation, and we calculated the required luminosity for discovery in the Higgs and top decay. And we interacted with uh, uh, experimentalists, and actually some of them already started to take our models for the real data analysis. So in short, uh, we did a whole package of the new dark horse study, and I'm still working on the dark horse as well as other new physics scenarios. I think I have several more minutes, but I'll only <laughs> just to <laughs> see uh, uh, what kind of more general lessons we can learn from this kind of study. So <coughs> this is the three uh, particle physics frontiers categorized by the US Department of Energy. The energy frontier, intensity frontier, and the cosmic frontier. The traditional view is the energy frontier is the high energy experiment to find the direct evidence of new heavy particles. And the intensity frontier is the low energy experiment to find the indirect evidence of the heavy particles. And the cosmic frontier is of course the underground or the satellite experiment to find the new signals from the sky. The, now the dark force brings an unconventional view the dark force was originally introduced in the cosmic frontier as a solution to the astrophysical anomaly. And it changed the intensity frontier to search for the direct evidence of the new physics, like the bump searches in the fixed target experiments in the major decays. And it also changed the energy frontier to look for the new light particles, not the heavy particles, as a decay product of the Higgs or the top, the heavy particles. And it can also, uh, it may change the cosmic frontier too, uh, possibly providing the new channels to search for the dark matter and such. So obviously this is very interdisciplinary and the rich physics and the each position uh, should be right here at the center of all uh, three particle physics frontiers. So I would conclude my talk that the future of the dark force study is very bright. So thank you. Questions? Questions? Yeah, since this is a heavily coupled to normal P anyway, so uh, for example, your people started like uh, D productions, just like uh, in the lab experiments have a lot of D. So this is supposed to model, uh, modify the light dimension slightly, right? You get a little bit higher or something, just like, do you get any concern on that? Like a dimension, because you measure a dimension or something. That's right, when there's a new uh, neutral gauge version, there's a mix with the Z, so it will shift the, the, the location of the core of the Z version. And in terms of the mixing angle, it should be less than 10 to the minus 3 level. Mm -hmm. And because the small coupling, it, satisfies it just very easily. So it's easy to, to get here. So that means you get a slightly different Z bus. Try to think about how to do that. Great question. Okay, just curious about where you get your bias idea about uh, the distribution about dark energy, dark energy. Where did I get it? Yeah, because that version you use is quite different from the current version that we oh, use really? in cosmology. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I just took it from Google. Absolute plus is slightly more dark matter on there. <laughs> and so uh, that kind of, yeah, yeah. currently dark energy is like 68% and dark energy is like 20, 27. I think. But I mean, I know it's not the point. I mean, Let me try to update. So, so, so you show this number with the modified future. Yeah. I couldn't hear how many dark force models that you have described. Are there quite a, a lot of models developed by somebody else? And you just look at the company. 
Is that correct? Uh, the original model was developed by Cunningham and Adar, but uh, we made uh, some uh, variant of that model called Dark Z. <coughs> <coughs> But you weren't trying, that was already around, like for the particle field center model, right? Of course, the question is which you want. <laughs> yeah, the question is which you want. I know. So, uh, the original model, um, which I don't think exists, just I can't have it alone, uh, but actually many uh, similar papers. Uh, so, he usually gets the most uh, uh, credit. And uh, what he did in 2012 is the dark G model. So, the basic difference is he extended the coupling to include this G coupling. And this one has the axial coupling, it makes a lot of difference in the phenomenon. In this context, can I ask that, is there anything forbidding mixing between, mixing with the dual? Mixing with Why did you introduce the Z essentially? Why did you introduce this one? Z union of twiddle. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh. Did, did anybody do model building like that? I think I understood your question. You mean instead of the B G prime B G two tilde? Yeah. Okay. Has anybody discussed that uh, kind of thing? Like it's dark anyway, so yeah, nothing yeah. is forbidden. <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not familiar with that. But that's kind of just a curiosity. Uh, okay. Okay, in your model, you, you assume you want x y one and you split it by the base couple, right? Yes. Uh, so it, it is a new z x z of this new base couple, right? Yes. Uh, so what is the relation between uh, the parameter space of this new base couple to current experimental image space? Will it affect them somehow in your model? Um, I think the question is the, if I get any constraint or prediction because of this extra hysteria. Yeah. That's a very good question. And actually, um, this paper, <laughs> uh, of the top decay, which is uh, charged Higgs, which comes from the Higgs W. So actually, this is a natural uh, component of that model. And the one thing interesting is, and when you have, of course, when you have extra Higgs doublet, you have an extra neutral Higgs as well as the charged Higgs. One thing very interesting in this model is the charged Higgs decays um, dominantly to the G prime. So in the typical two Higgs doublet model, they decay to the top and bottom, or the top and mu, depending on the mass. But as you can see from this plot, the charge Higgs decays to the HW <coughs> and H, small h, which is not the, which is non-standard model, it decays to G prime, G prime almost 100%. So charge Higgs decays to the very elusive G prime, which is why such a light charge Higgs is possible, uh, lighter than the top core. So, so yeah, we studied the H constraint and its predictions, and we actually used it for the top decay. Oh, oh, just by assuming very small val bad value. Yeah, <laughs> it might be <coughs> unnatural, but that's yeah. how it works. Yes, I see. <coughs> work for direct W to W G prime? W to W G prime? Sure. No, no, I'm sorry. Maybe there's no such coupling, but uh, I'm just curious about this. Oh, you mean the, this, well, you, this, this coupling? Can someone help me? Is there a W W G coupling at all in the standard model? Yeah, no. Huh? Yes, there is. So, so is, shouldn't that be leading? We have seen top decay. We haven't <coughs> seen top to charge it. Oh, you mean the P to be W and the Wait, W? The mechanism is that you you have a, this is still W Z and Z mixes to Z prime, right? Yes. So why doesn't it happen? Why, why should I look directly 
rather than a charge Higgs framework, mm -hmm. it should be the same for standard neutrinos. Mm -hmm. So you mean uh, attaching the shift line to the W? Yeah. That's possible. That's, That's possible. No, not just that. Rather than in a charge Higgs context, it should be in a standard neutrinos context. So actually, the, we are working on it. I mean, the, basically, the radiation of the shift line. In this, uh, in this study, we just uh, assumed the initial decay from the top, but actually we are going to that direction. We are to work on it. But the the, 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 the the reason we did not come, we did not include it here is because uh, in our all, in our the initial study, the G prime mass should be very small, like just like 100 MeV or 300 MeV. More than that, that's very difficult to see the to see the, uh, the effect. So we assumed just a few a few GeV G prime. And, and for that case, the radiation can be neglected. And we just uh, studied the decay case, the initial decay. But uh, you, you are correct. I mean, the, one can study this, the official the radiation. Okay, any further questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so okay, I see no further questions. Looks like uh, Dr. Yi again. Thank you.